Hello everyone! In this Python and signal processing tutorial, we explain how to symbolically compute the Fourier series expansion in Python and how to generate graphs of the Fourier series and related approximation functions. Although there are other methods for computing the Fourier series, such as for example a method based on numerical approximation of integrals for computing Fourier series expansion coefficients, in this tutorial we use the method based on symbolic computation of the Fourier series coefficients. Since the method that we will explain in this video tutorial is based on symbolic integration, it can help engineers, students and professors to obtain important insights into the analytic forms and formulas for Fourier series coefficients and functions. To perform symbolic computations and integration, we use the Python SymPy library. After watching this video tutorial and after learning the material presented in this video tutorial, you will be able to generate this graph. This graph shows the Fourier series approximation of the rectangular wave. The rectangular wave function is represented by the red line. The Fourier series approximation is represented by the blue line. Over here, we only take seven terms of the Fourier series approximation. You can obtain a better approximation by increasing the number of terms. For example, over here I will change this number and as the result we will obtain better approximation. Here it is. Furthermore, after watching this video tutorial and after learning the material presented in this video tutorial, you will be able to derive analytic functions involving complex exponentials and harmonics that are used to compute the Fourier series approximation shown in this graph. And here's the function. This function mathematically and analytically describes the blue line. Look over here. It looks pretty and you will be able to compute this function symbolically in Python. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial as well as more than 400 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. Over here, I will briefly summarize the Fourier series. In addition to this video tutorial that you're currently watching, I also created another video tutorial that provides a clear and self-contained explanation of the Fourier series. And here is the second tutorial. I will provide a link to the second tutorial in the description below this video tutorial. Let y of t be a periodic function then the Fourier series of a periodic function is defined by the following equation. Over here, k is the index that goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. ck is the Fourier series coefficient computed like this. e is the exponential function. j is the imaginary unit. Omega 0 equal to 2 pi over t0 is the fundamental frequency and t0 is the fundamental period of the function y of t. The Fourier series coefficients in this expansion are computed like this. We take the function y of t and we multiply y of t by this exponential and we integrate the result over the fundamental period and that's it. Okay, let's start with implementation. The main idea for computing the Fourier series is to symbolically compute the coefficient ck. That is, we will symbolically integrate the function y of t multiplying this complex exponential. Once we compute ck, we will symbolically compute the right-hand side of this equation. Then, after we obtain the symbolic expression for y of t, or a symbolic expression for the truncated sum on the right-hand side, we can automatically generate a Python function that will return the value of this truncated sum or the value of y of t for a given value of t. 
As a test case, we will use this function. It's a rectangular wave function with a period, or better to say with a fundamental period, of 4 seconds. So let's start. The first step is to import the necessary libraries. I need a NumPy library, and from SymPy library I'm importing all the functions and all the packages. Then I need a plotting function, and over here the first step is to define time. That is, I need to define my variable t. To do that, in SymPy I'm using the function symbol, and I specify the name of my symbol. Over here I'm specifying that t is a real variable. Then I need to define my fundamental period, t0. Then I need to define fundamental frequency, given over here, and I need to define the amplitude of the wave function. That is, the amplitude is the distance from here to here, and it's equal to 2. The next step is to symbolically compute the coefficient ck given by this equation. To do that, let us go back to our function. Here it is. And we need to recognize several things. The period of this function is 4 seconds, and the amplitude is equal to 2. Also, it should be observed that this function is non-zero only in the interval from 0 to 1 seconds. After that, that is, from 1 seconds to 4 seconds, it's equal to 0. Consequently, this integral can be written like this. Then we are integrating the function y of t, that is our square function, from 0 to 4. The fundamental period is equal to 4, and we can split this integral like this. From 0 to 1, we have 2, that is the amplitude is equal to 2, and that's our function y of t, multiplying this exponential term, plus the second part from 1 to 4. However, the function is equal to 0 from 1 to 4, and consequently this term is equal to 0. As the result, ck takes this form, or the general form given over here, where I parameterize this integral by using these variables t0 and a. Here is the piece of code I have wrote for computing ck. I assume that the max value of k is equal to 10. That is, I'm computing the coefficient ck starting from minus k until to plus k, that is, in total I'm computing 2k plus 1 coefficients. k is equal to 10. Then I create a vector containing all the coefficients. And over here, this list is used to store the computed ck. Then, in this for loop, I compute the coefficient ck one by one. And I do it by using this code line. I use the symbolic computation function integrate. I define my function a exponential, a exponential, index, index is actually the k value, i, capital I, is the SymPy notation for the imaginary unit, in our case it's j, then I have omega zero and I have time. Note over here that time is a symbolic variable. Then, this is the first argument of the integrate function. The second argument is this tuple. The first entry of this tuple is time, that is the integration variable, and the second and the third arguments are the integration bounds, that is from 0 to 1. After I compute this Integral, I need to divide the result, or better to say, to multiply it by 1 over t0, that is, I'm computing the complete term, and after I do that, I call the function simplify and eval f, which means that I'm actually evaluating the value of this integral, and I'm only taking 6 digits. And finally, I append the list called computed coefficients that's used to store the actual coefficients ck. So let's execute this piece of code and let's see the results. Okay, very quick. And let's look into this list. And voila, here it is. Here are all the coefficients. 
Let us now change these numbers such that this list becomes smaller. For example, let's select k is equal to 4, such that you can nicely see it over here. And let's look into the computed coefficients. Here they are. Let me expand this part. You can see it. Now, over here for clarity, I've wrote the formula for CK. This coefficient over here is C0. This coefficient over here is C1. This coefficient over here is actually C minus 1. Similarly, the other coefficients are, this is C2, this is C minus 2, this coefficient is C3, and this coefficient is minus, actually C minus 3. And finally, this is C4, and this coefficient over here is C minus 4. How do we know that this is the correct answer? Well, we can observe that C1 complex conjugate is actually equal to C minus 1. And the same holds true for C2, C minus 2, etc. This means that this approach actually works. The next step is to compute the Fourier series approximation given by this truncated sum. In our implementation, the number n is actually denoted by k over here, so keep in mind that. How do we do that? Here is the piece of code for computing this truncated sum. First of all, I define the approximate function, and it's equal to 0. This value will be used to store the complete value of our function. Then, I zip coefficient number given over here and you can see the coefficient number actually over here, and computed coefficients. Here are the computed coefficients. So I simply zip them, and over here in this for loop, I unzip. That is, I go over the entries in this zip. And what do I do over here? I'm simply evaluating and adding things together. That is, here's the coefficient, then e to the power, this term over here. For clarity, here is the formula that I'm actually implementing. I'm summing up these terms. That is, coefficient value, coefficient value, multiplying the exponential. Note that in SymPy, the exponential function is denoted by capital E. Then, capital I in SymPy notation stands for the imaginary unit, coefficient number is k, Omega 0 is omega 0, and t is time. Let us evaluate this piece of code. After evaluating this piece of code, we can look into the analytic expression for our function. Here it is. Looks very pretty. And just for the reference, let's look into the coefficients. Here they are. Here are the terms. We should have actually 4 multiplying 2 plus 1, that is in total 9 terms. However, over here you can see that we have 7 terms. This is because this value of ck and this value of ck, that is the value of ck for k is equal to plus minus 4, is equal to 0. And consequently, over here we will only have 7 terms. And this is our Fourier series approximation of our original function where we took the first 4 times 2 plus 1, that is, in total 9 terms. Our next goal is to plot the results. And for that purpose, I wrote this Python script, shown over here. The first thing that we need to do is to create a function on the basis of our symbolic expression that is, on the basis of this expression. So how do we do that in Python? We use this function lambdify. We specify the name of the symbolic expression and we specify the argument t. This means that we will evaluate this expression for fixed value of t. 
the lambda five function will actually return another function and this function in my case is called approximation fun and you can see that it's actually a function now if I write something like this let's say for example of 1 I will get this value that is I will get the value of this truncated sum that is the Fourier series approximation for t is equal to 1 now note one artifact over here over here you can observe that we have the imaginary part that's a very small number consequently we will simply neglect the imaginary part since effectively this imaginary part is equal to zero the next step is to define the time vector we will evaluate this approximate sum for all the entries inside of this time vector and over here we simply create the function values we use our newly defined approximation function and we just plug in the time vector and this will return us the values of this sum evaluated at the time vector now as I mentioned previously we need to extract real values from this function because if you look into this function it has real and imaginary values Consequently, over here, I will only extract the real values. Then, over here, I'm creating a periodic rectangular wave function. This is the function from the beginning of this video tutorial. That is the rectangular wave function that we want to approximate. I need to create two vectors in order to graphically represent this function. I need to create a vector of time values. We already have this vector over here and I need to create another vector that will represent the function values and I do it over here I simply create a for loop and on the basis of this expression over here I either assign values of 2 or values of 0 and that's it and finally we need to plot the results we do it over here okay let's run this script and let's see the result here it is, voila! This is precisely the graph from the beginning of this video tutorial. Now, we can play with this graph. For example, we can use 100 terms over here. This will probably take some time since we are symbolically integrating everything. So let's wait for the result. And here is the approximation. This is the approximation of the rectangular wave function by using the Fourier series expansion with 201 terms and we can observe very interesting phenomenon over here this phenomenon is called the Gibbs phenomenon or Gibbs ears that is we can see an overshoot and undershoot and this is a very well known issue with Fourier series and there are many methods to get rid of these overshoots and undershoots more about this in my future tutorials Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.